Okay, hello and welcome to this Escape Studios tutorial on bringing your camera track into Maya and using Nuke to undistort your backplate. We're going to be using 3D Equalizer, Maya and Nuke 9. And we won't be explaining how to go about tracking in this tutorial. Uh, that would take a very long time to explain all the techniques. But we will cover a couple of tips on handling your 3D projects. Uh, one advisable thing is to set up your files properly. So here inside my Maya project folder for this tutorial, I've got a 3D folder where I've saved my 3D projects. And in my source images, I have my raw image sequence and I have the undistorted image sequence, which we'll look at later how to do that in Nuke. It's just nice to do this so that you can remember where all of your files are. Also in movies, I've got the original MOVs for uh, these two. So in 3D, really the first thing you want to do is to, once you've uh, gone into the camera tab and, and brought in your uh, footage in this, this browse button here, put in your image sequence, is to go into the lens tab and make sure all of your camera information is correct. So we've got film back height and width, focal length, film aspect, uh, lens distortion model, and different types of distortion we're going to adjust for. Really want to have the film back width typed in as the absolute value for your particular uh, make and model of camera, and keep that fixed, and the film back height. Let 3D work that out as passive. I was told that this was shot with a 15mm lens, but I can't be sure, so I've just typed in 15mm for the focal length, and I'm going to adjust for it afterwards, so I'll show you how to do that. It's a good idea, if you are certain of the focal length that you used during shooting, to just put this in and have this as fixed, so that you don't have to worry about calculating it later. We also want our pixel aspect to be 1, and keep that fixed because we definitely want to be using square pixels we don't want any rectangular strange shaped pixels because when we bring our image plane into Maya with our plate things won't line up or if we do line them up and then we try and comp our CG over the back plate again in Nuke the CG won't match the back plate and everything will be off and you will be sorely disappointed so we're really going to start this tutorial from the uh, adjustment stage. Like I said, we're not explaining how to track. So I've tracked this shot. Here we are, just play through in real time. Nice atmospheric lighting, nice shot, this one. And I've got a standard deviation of just slightly over one. You don't really want to be adjusting before uh, reaching a nice low standard deviation of this and having an average of around 0 0.2, 0 0.3. If you're adjusting from a standard deviation of 2, no matter what you do, your track will be off and your CG will slide across the plate when you bring it into Maya, when you render it out. So let's do some adjustments. If we go into Windows Parameter Adjustment Window, bring that across here. So when we come to the Parameter Adjustment Window, we're going to adjust lens, uh, focal length, and lens distortion and quartic separately. We can uh, start by putting this range to wide, so we've got a nice wide area for 3D to try and narrow down what our actual focal length was. You can type in your own values here, but I just want to see what it gives us by default. I've put the samples up to 40, because this computer's pretty good. Let's adjust there. That was nice and quick. Yes, we want to transfer these parameters to our project. And then afterwards we want to go to Fine, and it's saying between 13 and a bit and 16 and a bit. So it's going to come pretty close to our estimated 15 mil. Let's go to Adaptive, so it goes between these two values. And you can see it's nearly at 15 up here, 14.7, so let's adjust that and see what we get. Okay, we want to transfer those as well. And now we've got 14.8, so very close to 15. I'm quite happy with that. So let's turn on our distortion and our quartic distortion. We want to again go to wide brute force method. So we're not quite sure 
uh, what range the distortion is going to fall into so we'll let 3d handle that and if we go to clear clear our graph and adjust it's adjusting now the distortion and the quartic together we can see by our graph we can just left click and rotate around this V shape is quite characteristic if you've got anything other than this be aware maybe your track is a little bit off we want to transfer those parameters and let's go to fine and adaptive fine and adaptive so it's looking between these small ranges and let's adjust for that as well now one thing I forgot to mention earlier is that you really should have enough points in all three uh, 3D axes X, Y, and Z to make sure uh, that 3D, the program, has enough information uh, from which to calculate your distortion correctly. If you have only a narrow band of points going through the shot, it won't know how high or wide your, your plate is. It's relying on the points that you put in. So make sure you have a nice spread of points all over the place. Transfer that. Good. Well, now we've adjusted. Let's minimize this window. And one thing we can see is I've, we'll come back to this later, but I've got two points here in the Y that are pretty much right on top of each other. We can take these to be our Y axis. We've got two points on the ceiling, which we can probably take to be our X axis. And we've got a point on the corner of these two pillars, which we can take to be our Z. And we can use these points in 3D and later in Maya to make sure our scene is lined up nicely. So once we've done that, let's go to Deviation Browser, Show Point Deviation Curves and All Points. And now our graph reflects uh, our tracked, tracked points. Let's put on our 3D points with 3D points. You can see them there. Now they're a little bit off. It's because the uh, distortion has been calculated, but we haven't displayed it. And really, you only want to be adjusting uh, when you're deviation is one or very very slightly above if you're way above one you're 1 1.5 uh, you know two you, you want to keep working on the track before adjusting adjusting is really something that you want to do right right at the end so now we can do one last calculation to get our points to reflect the adjustments we've made we can either go calc calc all from scratch or alt c and there we go so these are our points in 3D space, how 3D's seeing them. We've got a nice smooth camera path, this was a nice dolly shot. And there's been a change of 0.3% to our calculation. So let's use that result. It should bring our deviation down, and it has 0.96. So that should be a nice stable track. Now before we want to export anything, I'll show you the orientation environment. So if you click on environments and orientation, you've got this 3D space, use the mouse wheel to zoom in. We can see our points here. So we can use this window to line up the X, Y and the Z points so that hopefully when our points group comes into Maya we've got a nice uh, a nice layout already. So if I go back to environments and back to basic, we want to choose one point that's going to be uh, the point that sits on the origin, the origin of uh, world space and Maya, keeps everything nice and clean. And I think this one here will do nicely, so I'm going to hold Alt, left click and drag a box so that that's highlighted. If we go environments and go back to orientation, you can see that yellow point is the one we highlighted. And I've just deselected it. Well done. Let's go back to basic, highlight it, environments, orientation. So if I go to now edit, move 1.2, origin, and it snaps that to world, uh, world zero. Now I want to find two points in the Y, which we looked at earlier. Let's go back to basic. I'm going to alt, left click and drag a small box around these two. So these are two Y points, head back to orientation. It's these two yellow points here. I'm just left clicking and moving the mouse to uh, pan around. And then we go edit, align two points to, and this is the y axis. See, it adjusts it to the y. And we're going to do it for the, the two z points as well. So basic, alt, left click and drag a small box around these two. 
trying not to get other points. Environments, orientation, got those two selected. Let's have a look. I'll just deselect them again. Back to basic. Environments, orientation, those two there. Edit, align two points to, it's already open. Z axis. Bang. Now, it looks quite tilted, so maybe we'll have to do the Y again. Sometimes you have to do this a couple of times. Basic. Do the Y again, and then we'll do the X. Environments, orientation, edit, two points, two Y. That looks better. Environments, basic. Let's choose these two. Environments, orientation, edit, two points, two X. Right -o. So that looks nicely ready. Let's go back to the basic environment again. And at this point, we want to keep 3D open. You want to save your project by going 3D4, or whichever version you have. Save project, save project as, and save it in that 3D folder in your Maya project directory. And this time, to export the script, we want to go to Export Project and Maya. This is version, it's just the version of the uh, script. When we click on that, it'll ask you for a destination. You can save it in your 3D folder in your project directory or into your scripts folder that comes by default with your My Project Directory. Now I've done this already, so what we're going to do is now have a quick look at Nuke. And this one's my previous one I set up for this tutorial, so I'm just going to go to New Comp, so it's blank. Hopefully. Let's just open a new one there. Let's just close this one. And let's navigate to the undistorted footage, the original image sequence I've got in my source images. I'm going to bring that in, click and drag the folder into the work area in Nuke. These are just thumbnails, and uh, this is the uh, 3D um, compression file playback speed. Press 1 on the keyboard with this node highlighted and you will view your backplate. So that we know what frame range we're dealing with, let's go to where it says global and click on input. This is going to make sure the frame range displayed is how many frames are actually in the shot. Let's just play it through once so it caches. Okay, so that will play, play back nice and swiftly if we want it to. So to find the undistortion node, you've got this little icon here, 3D4. Let's click on this and choose LD, 3D Classic LD model. This is the algorithm we use to calculate our distortion in 3D. If you've got this node highlighted, it will just drop it in there. So now we've got all these parameters. Uh, we want to match the values here with the values that were calculated in 3D Equalizer. But there is a script that will do this for us, but for this tutorial I'm just going to type it in manually. I personally prefer it this way because then you end up uh, understanding exactly what your values are. I'm just going to slightly minimize Nuke there. Right. So. Some of the units are different in Nuke as in 3D, so make sure you check the units. Focal length is in centimeters, as uh, in 3D it's in millimeters. So we're going to put 1.48329. And focus distance is not, well, we don't want to play with that. Film back width and height, we do. The width is in centimeters, luckily it is this way in 3D as well. And let's put in the film back height, which is 1.155. Now distortion, usually if it's correct, this should be a slightly negative number, and quartic should be a slightly positive number, as we've got here, so that's correct, and it should be. Minus 
0.2, and the Corsica is 0.0183. Good. So now we've got this dis undistorted plate, and we can let's view our original backplate. You can see the very slight shift. If I maximize this, you can see the very slight shift in distortion and this kind of green line. I believe this is Nuke trying to interpolate the the curvature and blend the pixels to the edge of the shot, and it's having a little bit of an error there. But that's fine. You can just ignore that. That won't appear when you comp over your backplate uh, right at the end. So we can see a little perspective change. We can see what effect it's had. Spacebar to go between these two windows. Mouse over, spacebar maximize, spacebar minimize. So before we do anything else, we want to make a crop node. So with your mouse over the work area tab, start typing crop, select crop. And let's drop this in here, connect that up. Or you can connect it by just dragging the arrow, connecting it to the node you want it to, and then dragging this down to here. And it'll assign a viewing number. Now the crop is to make sure that the film aspect remains uh, consistent. And we want to tell it to reformat. And at the moment it's got some arbitrary values in here that we don't want. So what we want to do is, you can see viewer 2, we want to go, actually let's make, let's make our uh, distortion model number 2 by pressing 2 on the keypad. We can see these values at the top, 1329 by 724. Now if you remember this is not the values of the original plate, so the size of the image has been changed by the distortion calculation, but the crop is going to account for this when we put our values in. Now these two numbers, what you want to do is type them in, but one less. So this will be 1328, and this will be 723. And in the bottom left corner here, we've got some very tiny uh, numbers that we want to see. So let's zoom in nice and close. Minus 5 and minus 4. And you also want to subtract 1 from these. I'll explain why in a moment. So this will actually be minus 4. So I add one to these, so it'll be minus four, and this will be minus three. There we go. So now when we view the crop node, we can see our new cropped resolution fits exactly. Now, you can export the undistorted plate from 3D with warp four, but it does have a small error where it uh, crops off one pixel and it gives you a bit of a black border. The black border is not such a problem, but the pixel is. Uh, when you crop a pixel off, you're going to be lining all your geometry up to uh, a backplate that, depending on, depending on its resolution, uh, you know, the size of one pixel will change, it will be a pixel out. And when you then comp over the top of your original plate, you may find there may be some problems, and that's quite late in the uh, late in the game to be trying to change things in your Maya scene. If you've got to, you know, the comp stage, you don't want to be uh, finding your CG not lining up properly right at the end there. So this method basically avoids that one pixel. At this stage, what you want to do is you've got your correct crop, and you want to write note, so you can just tap W on the keyboard with the crop node highlighted. And we've got a write note here. Now, because the back plate in Maya doesn't have to be, doesn't have to have uh, a great color depth, you can just use a target or a JPEG sequence for this. I'm going to use a JPEG sequence. Um, it depends whether or not you want to project anything from the back plate onto your geometry as textures in UV space. Then I would suggest using a file format that has some color depth. But for this example, JPEG is just fine. The easiest way to do this is to go to the folder that you want. I've already got a brick lane undistorted folder. Go into here, copy this link with Control C and Control V in file. You want to put a 
backslash and then the name of your uh, frames that you want you want to call it. So I'm going to do proclaim underscore undistorted dot hash 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 hash. This is your frame padding. So this is going to insert four numbers. So frame one will be triple zero one, then triple zero two, etc., etc. This means you can have up to nine thousand nine hundred ninety nine frames if you want. So and then dot jpeg you always have to give the file extension so nuke will understand what type of file it is i'm going to put the quality up to one and we've got all the frames in here that i want to render out but when you click on render it will ask you for a frame range if the whole range is what you want to render out just leave this and click ok but you can choose uh, if you've got like a you know a dead part of the of the shot that you don't actually want to be rendering in you can just Put your own values, your own frame range in here, and then click OK and it'll start writing it out. Because this takes a little while, it can take between half an hour and an hour to render all these images out, depending on what file format you're rendering out in. I'm going to skip this because we've already done it. As you can see, I've already got my own distorted uh, frames here. And we're going to say that we've exported the script. Again, I've already done that. You just go export project Maya. And let's open Maya. Okay, so now we're going to bring our stuff into Maya. Uh, let's open Maya, open a new scene, file new scene. And we don't want to save changes to that one there. And let us set our project as well. You must set your project so that Maya knows uh, where your images are and your source images click on I've got tracking quick tip whatever you called your project click on that folder and click set and now we're going to bring in our script which is in I've saved it in the scripts folder you can save it in the 3d folder if you want but either is fine I've got my nuke script and the brick lane track that shot was from brick lane let's drag this on and minimize now you can't see much but in the outliner you've got a group called scene and there's our points group and our camera. Now, it hasn't brought it in with that point at the origin. Not to worry, sometimes it has a bit of a problem. We can sort this out manually. Often you will end up doing a lot of manual tweaking and moving. Often lining up your geometry with your track is a case of just lots and lots of very fine, uh, fine movements. We want to make sure our scene scale is in meters, because we've got quite large objects in our shot if we go back to 3d quickly you can see this is quite a large space and for the sake of this i've just estimated a rough guess that there are points that we chose for our y are about three meters apart so we're going to say that this pillar is three meters it may be it may be more it probably is but just for the sake of showing this i'll say that it's three meters go back to maya go to window settings and preferences preferences Halfway down settings, and we've got centimeters. Let's make it meters and click save, close. Now, our points group appears quite small in the middle of here, and our locators that represent where our tracking points are are gigantic. We can sort this out, it's not a problem. One thing you must not ever do is scale the camera, and you must never scale the points group see our locator group here these are all our, where our tracking points are scroll through these I'll show you all of these we mustn't scale this group or the camera independently you'll create an offset between the points group and the camera and or you'll uh, mess up the uh, camera attributes that you set carefully in 3d so what we want to do is uniformly scale the group the, the overall group that's got everything in we go to uh, channel box if we scale it up to 10 make it 10 times bigger now our locators are enormous but their actual point location in the middle of the crosses is probably a bit closer to what the actual scene scale is if we want to scale the locators down let's open that group and we select the shape nodes highlight those if you can accurately click and drag a selection box without selecting the camera and getting all your points you can do that in the viewport as well and let's uniformly scale these down 0.1 
it's a bit easier to understand what's going on now. Let's even make them a little bit smaller. Let's do 0 0.05. There you go. It's a bit easier. I'll close that off. Now you can make the camera larger in the viewport. Again, not by scaling with the scale tool. Never do this. Go into the attribute editor into the camera shape node. This is brick lane one, one shape one. And go down to object display. And you've got locator scale. So this is just a representation. You make that four and see the camera a bit more straightforward, but easier. If you scale the camera, like I said, you will mess up your uh, your camera attributes. So let's find our origin point by selecting the whole group. We want to snap this to the the origin, the world origin. And I can't remember which one it was. I believe it was this one, but let's check in 3D in the basic view. And we've got one, two, three, four here, and it's the one in the middle of this triangle, three. Go back to Maya. Yes, it is this one here. So what we want to do, press W to just bring up one of your um, translation uh, handles. Hold down D or press insert on the keyboard. Press V and hold and you're going to go into vertex snap mode and you can see the icon, relevant icon highlighted when I press and press V and let go. When a middle mouse click over this point and it will snap our tool to there. And then we can use the middle mouse button to move our whole group around. Now we want to snap the whole group with the pivot on our origin point to the middle of world or uh, middle of the uh, the grid there, the origin. If we hold X, it's going to snap the grid lines. Middle mouse click, you can see it snapping to grid lines. So snap it to the origin. There we are. Now things look a little bit off kilter. They're just a little bit leaning to the left, not quite right. So again, our orientation in 3D wasn't quite correct. If you press E on the keyboard. We can gently rotate these so these ground locators are a bit low under the grid and these ground locators are a little bit high. So let's just rotate that a tiny bit. It's almost there. We're going to refine this a bit later on. So now let's let's find our two points that were in the Y. And I believe it was this one and this one. Ooh, not that one. Let's undo that. We don't want to rotate those. Q. Control click and drag to deselect. These two are on top of each other. I believe these are our Y ones. So if we go into our four panel view and we've got a side view down here, put the cursor, your mouse cursor over this and press space to expand and let's zoom out a little bit. Cool, we can see those. So this is meters. So each one of these is one meter and it's about a meter and a half. So we want to scale the whole group up so that this locator is roughly up here. So that we don't have to come out of this view, let's go Window, Outliner, select the scene group and minimize that window. Now we can scale up, middle mouse button, drag to scale up, and this is very, very slow. So let's go into the Channel Box Layer Editor, and instead of 10, let's choose 20, because that was about one and a half meters, we want three. So now we've got our locators on top of each other, roughly three meters. We can see our ground plane is also tilting up this way a little bit, so we press E. Excuse me, typing it in there. Press E, and let's just rotate down a little bit. Lots of fine movements, just gently moving everything. Let's go back to our perspective and highlight those two locators that are on top of each other. It was this one and this one, not that one. And go back, spacebar, and spacebar again with the cursor over this window. And that's one, two, three, so they're pretty much three meters apart. Let's go back to our perspective. Now, for setting up the image plane, if you come into your outliner, and delete the image plane that it brings in by default. Often this has errors and it will not work. It's much easier to just make your own, so let's just delete that. We want to go into the render settings, this tab up here. You're likely to be rendering a mental race. Let's just select mental race if you've got all the tabs. 
and down here we want to put in the render resolution now let's go back into nuke and this was 1332 by 726 this cropped version that we wrote out undistorted this is the resolution that we need 1332 by 726 let's do 1332 by 726 Bam. we can see our aspect ratio is the same aspect ratio that we had in 3d now here let's minimize that and to look through our camera Let's just open that scene, middle click and drag the camera called, in this case, Brick Lane, onto the viewport. Boom. And now we're looking through. Up here, you've got your film gate and your resolution. Let's click on the film gate. So this is going to be, uh, th this is the overscan area. This won't be rendered. Everything inside this will be rendered. So this is your view of your shot. Uh, if we click on the little blue circle in the white uh, square, we can see our render resolution up here. So to import the image plane, let's choose View, Image Plane, Import Image. And it's going to bring up a window into our source images, where, which is where it looks by default, and that's where I've put our uh, backplates. So we want the undistorted one to be using for lining up our geo in Maya. Let's open this one, choose the first frame, and click Open. And here you have it. We want to go into the attribute editor, into the image plane shape, and choose use image sequence. Sometimes you will want a frame offset. Sometimes moving between Nuke and 3DE, it will add one number to the frame number. So you can put in a frame offset. We're on frame one at the moment of minus one. Nope, it doesn't like that. So it has worked by default, which is nice. Zero. Frame cache we have 245 frames so let's choose 245 for the frame cache and let's play it through so as it plays through it's caching these frames into one of my temporary folders somewhere when it plays through the next time it should be nice and smooth we can see our tracking points here in fact let's choose this so you can see and it's good to just check that nothing's sliding. If any of your points are obviously sliding across the scene, sliding across the plate, bumping when the camera, uh, out of time with the camera, it means you're, something is wrong with your track. You need to go back into 3D and check that. But everything looks pretty good at the moment. So let's stop that and go back. Frame one. And I'm going to highlight my points again shift select all of those shape nodes and bring the scale down a bit again let's do 0 0.02 it's a bit nicer right now we want to bring our geometry in and say we're wanting to cast shadows with a piece of geometry that we're going to add into our scene on the ground here and it has to hit shadows on this wall so we need to model this pillar one thing we can do is Let's open this side by side. This is going to by default dump us back into perspective, but let's go into the outliner, bring our camera back into here. Go to panels in the left hand window and choose perspective and persp camera. So this one we can navigate around. Let's make them roughly even. So now we can see here we've got some locators behind the image plane. We don't really want this. So we can select the image plane in the viewport, or you can choose it in the outliner, or you can go into your camera and to go into the attribute editor and navigate to your image plane shape and you've got an attribute called depth I'm just going to make this 50 and this will push the image plane back a long way so far we can't actually see it let's make the depth 10 instead maybe 5 2 good so our image plane is in view but it's not obscuring in of our locators we can see all our locators through the camera We're still getting that clipping issue right so now we can start placing some geometry in this view let's try from this locator 
snapping a cube to here so we can try and make this this pillar. So let's go to polygons, click on the cube, or you can go create in the polygons tab, create polygon primitives cube. Choose the cube. Press W to get your translation handle. Hold D or press insert once on the keyboard and let's drag this up and down a little bit so we're constraining it to the y-axis hold V and middle shift and click over one of the points that one of the verts that's on the corner of this cube and now the pivot is snapped right to the bottom and in fact because that's on a corner let's snap our pivot to the corner that's better so D V middle click snap and now we're going for this locator here, which is this one in perspective. Hold V, middle click, and it will snap. Now, so that we can create our scene nice and straight on the grid, it's much better that you move the camera group and locator group uh, than you move your geometry. Otherwise, you're going to be building your geometry at a strange angle and it's going to be difficult to make modifications to mirror things if you need to, etc. It's much, much easier to move the group. So let's go back into the outliner, choose the scene group, minimize that, press E so we've got our rotation. And at this point, actually, it might be easier to snap the pivot of the group to the locator that's by our cube that's that's down here. So let's do that. V, sorry, D, V, and snap. So when we rotate, we're going to be rotating around this locator. Let's press spacebar over the perspective view. Press minus on the keyboard to make this handle a bit smaller. And let's gently rotate. You can press 4 on the keyboard to get your wireframe we can see that it is not quite lined up with the pillar that's okay let's select the cube press w and translate the cube just a little bit relative to that locator we can also press r and scale our cube from that point just so that it hits the edge of the pillar here. We can scale it up as well so that it's just just reaching the locator at the top. Press spacebar and spacebar in perspective so we're in post view. You can see how close we are. So we've moved the cube slightly off this locator now which is which is okay. And we're just a little bit off. Let's bring, ooh, let's bring that down a little bit. So now if we go back into our camera and play through. Let's go back to frame one. Press play. You can see in the wireframe that it just about matches. Maybe we need to move or scale it a little bit more to meet this edge. And again, it's a case of just gently moving things. What we can do is turn on anti-aliasing. We're in ren viewport render 2.0. It has a anti-aliasing option. It makes things nice and smooth. Maybe it's a little bit easier to see it in this in this way. I certainly prefer it. Let's play through again. And you can see it just comes away from that edge. We can try through the render camera moving it a little bit forwards. Let's play again. Really is a case of just making small fine movements, just making sure things line up. It's still coming away from that edge. So that locator isn't quite perfect I would say so I'm just going to move the cube a little bit to the side and scale it back in a tiny bit and let's press play again Q press play I'm in fact going to undo so that scale comes back and you can see it's just now matching let's go back to frame one it's not matching in that view, that's okay. Perhaps we should move it back a little bit. A lot of trial and error sometimes with these. You will eventually get it lined up.
still a wee bit off. Let's just move this forward a teeny bit. Come back to frame one. It's off at frame one. So we need to move in a little bit, I think. Let's check on the last frame. Cancel. Okay, guys, so if you, we could pick up from uh, the point at which, just before I created the cube, uh, and just edit that last bit out in the last section. <coughs> okay. So uh, the next thing you want to do to your camera before we go ahead and make any geometry is to work out the camera scale. Now you can work this out by going into Nuke and seeing your uh, cropped resolution versus the original resolution of the plate. We want to divide one number by the other. So let's just cheat and open calculator. So it was 1332 divided by the original which is 1324. This makes it 1.006. This is the number that we want to put in. 1.006 makes more accurate our image plane. You did see it jumped a little bit, but as soon as you play through, it will refresh the image and it will snap back to uh, fitting. So now let's make some geometry and line it up in the scene. If we choose this option here, it's going to dump us back into the perspective view, but let's just put the camera back in. Again, middle mouse click and drag into the pane that you want to view your render camera through. And in panels, the other pane will go to perspective post camera and make them about equal. So we can see now that uh, actually before we do any geometry, the, the image plane is kind of cutting off some of our locators and the, these will be obscured in the render view as well. We want to be able to see all of them so we can line everything up. So if we go into the image plane shape node and let us actually also increase the frame cache to the number of frames we have. And let's go down to this attribute called depth and let's just make this twice as big. And you can see now it's not obscuring any of the locators and these ones at the back do actually appear now as well. Right, so let's make a cube. We can go into the polygons tab, click on the cube or go modify, uh, sorry, create polygon primitives cube. I prefer just to use the shelf. And what we want to do, we frame that with F, is to snap the pivot to this corner because we're going to make this pillar line up here. So if we hold down D or press insert once, V, hold V, middle click and drag on the vertex in the corner there. Let's figure out which locator this is. It's that one there. So selecting this again, middle click, drag, sorry, hold V, middle click and drag over that locator. Now we want to rotate our camera group rather than rotating our geometry. If you rotate the geometry you're going to be building your scene all kind of crooked. It's much easier to build your scene straight and move your uh, your camera to uh, to your scene. So let's go to the outliner again, choose the scene and let's snap the pivot to this locator so our rotation will kind of make sense in, in this camera space. If we hold D, hold V, snap to this locator press E to get our rotation handle and now we can rotate gently around until it appears as though everything lines up. At this point we can get rid of the grid. It's easier to see. So we can see in this view, let's press spacebar to go back here. We're rotating. Remember we're not rotating we're not rotating the object, we're rotating the camera, although as it looks like the object's rotating, it's because we're looking through that camera. So let's go back and rotate it in perspective. It can be a bit sensitive if you're doing it through the render cam. Let's make that a bit smaller, that one a bit bigger. I would say that is close. Now, we can choose now the cube and scale it in object mode up to our second locator. It's going to be roughly there, space bar here, so we can see what we're doing. 
scale this up a little further very sensitive but there we go we're nearly there now we want to try and get this locator on this corner so again let's move the camera group click scene and it rotates this from this point until we're almost almost on the corner again this is going to be a lot of very fine gentle movements just to get everything to line up nicely if it takes you some time that's fine take the time to get it correct okay so we can have a look at this let's choose our cube again maybe we can scale it in the Z so it touches on there a little bit more closely and lines up and let's have a playthrough and view it in wireframe 4 you can see if it's close now there's a little bit of aliasing happening in the viewport in viewport 2.0 if you go to render and choose 2.0 if you're using Maya 2015 you can click on this button and it will smooth the wireframes make it a bit easier to see in the viewport if you're trying to line things up again again it's not quite not quite matching that's okay even though we've snapped it to this locator that locator wasn't perfectly on that corner so we go back to our perspective view and again choose the scene group let's make sure we go into tool settings and that we're in world space we're not moving in object space and let's just gently move and see which way we go coming forwards there and this lines up a bit more closely I think along this corner let's play that through let's highlight the cube so we can see it and it is pretty close it's coming away there just at that edge just a little bit I think probably our rotation is slightly off so let's have one more go at that choose the scene group E for rotation handle we're rotating about this point let's try and make some very small adjustments and again play that through just grabbing the timeline here that looks better so again it just takes a lot of tweaking but once you get there it's a really good feeling seeing your seeing your objects seeing your models actually move through a shot it's great okay so I want to just quickly make this wall as well so let's make a plane I'm going to shaded mode by pressing 5 let's hold J so we're snapping to degrees and we rotate this until it's totally vertical there we are and now we can point snap this hold V point snap it to let's say this point which is on the wall and then we can hold D hold V snap a pivot to this corner to this vertex with the middle mouse button R let's scale up so we're pretty much the height of the wall and then let's scale along the wall maybe we can move it along this way a little bit scale along the wall again now again it is slightly off but the more bits of geometry you put in to represent your scene the more accurate uh, your your lineup of your scene will be so if we see that this kind of is close but this is off we know we need to rotate things before we do that let's go into perspective and make sure we're actually snapped to the correct locator so we snap to this locator here perhaps we should snap to this one let's have a look through the render camera again and wireframe so we can see let's try snapping to this one this one is also on the wall so if we go um, D V middle mouse click this one here W V snap to here go back look through the render camera and that looks a little bit closer well the rotation is still a bit off that's fine let's go to our scene group press E for rotation let's do a little bit more rotation and we're looking to get 
more of these perspective lines to line up in the shot. And I can see now that the cube here wasn't quite lining up. So I think that's actually a little bit closer. It looks a bit closer with this one as well. Oh dear, it's very sensitive. Let's check our cube again. Let's scrub through and see if that sticks. That does stick. So let's try and scale our cube out again. Just ignoring the plane for a minute. Okay, I think this is probably closer. So the cube really looks like it lines up now. There's, so there must be something off with our plane. Let's go back to our perspective view. Choose the plane. Let's move us forward just for a minute. Uh, let's modify center pivot. Let's just center that and decide which locator to go for next. So I'm looking at this one, this one, and this one. These ones appear to be on the wall. We can try this one as well. Let's try, let's make sure that is in fact nicely lined up. If we go to our channel box, you can see 90 rotation, that's fine. So let's try snapping to this one, just moving straight down, making sure we're in world. Move to here. Still not quite lining up. But this is the general principle of how you would go about doing this. Sometimes you'll find that the geometry you're seeing is in fact not square. And in those instances, it is then acceptable to m manipulate your geometry in this way. Let's try and scale this up. So let's play this through right from the beginning, seeing if it sticks, seeing if any of those lines slide. And to me, this looks like it really does stick. This would be hidden by this pillar, but at the moment we haven't modeled that pillar, so it looks like it's behind it. It's not. So this really looks like it's sticking. Now you can drop any model you want on here, snap it to one of these locators, and do a little bit of fine tuning until it really looks solid. Now what I have, if I open this scene, is a scene that I did earlier called Geo Line Up 01, in which I have actually put a couple of lights in just to sort of make it look nice. You can see I managed to get these to stick really, really nicely. This one's still a tiny bit off. If I open my outliner, I have a base mesh. that I've hidden, placed in the scene. There's five. You see this guy. When we play through, he really looks like he sticks. He looks like he sits on the ground, and that's what you want. If he's bouncing relative to the back plate, if he's sliding across the image, looks like he's floating, doesn't look like he's grounded, whatever object you've modeled, you need to reassess things. All right, so I think that's it. There's a lot more that can be said on this subject, but it's kind of beyond the scope of this tutorial to go through tracking, to go through lighting and rendering and integration properly. But hopefully you've gained something from this tutorial. Now you can see how you would bring your uh, 3D script into Maya, line up your geometry, line up your scene, and hopefully get a nice solid track so that your geometry doesn't slide across your shot, breaking the illusion of the effect. Alright, thanks for listening. See you soon.